There are two ways to connect to the Monaco in order to view live data. Both are set up under the link menu option and then options. If you're connected to the Monaco via USB cable, make sure you check the USB radio box here. You can also do it over Ethernet by selecting TCP IP and making sure that slow link is checked. Slow link allows for some extra latency. So we're going to connect over Ethernet with the Monaco gateway I have here. So I collect OK. Now I go to network and I set the network IP address for the Monaco. In my case it's 10.1.63.202 and I need to set the gateway. One zero. This is my uh, network gateway. 3.1 Okay, now I go up to link and I'm going to select extract. And the reason I'm going to do this is I'm going to pull the latest version or the current configuration that is loaded in, into the Monaco. And in larger groups, you want to do this in case somebody's come in behind you and made some changes that you weren't aware of. That way you always have the latest one going. And it's going to ask me if I want to save changes to my old file. I'm going to say no and it's reading the file out of the Monaco. All right, now, I'm going to save that as a web demo one. Click save. Now you'll see that all of the blocks have populated over here. To view live data, since I'm connected via Modbus TCP, you go to any of the green blocks, all of the data mapped is the same. I'm going to right click on the first block. I'm going to choose watch block. And you'll see my watch window comes up. Now right there it says showing simulated data. To view live data, I need to click view online. Okay. Sometimes this happens. So the firmware in the software of the Monaco View 2 that I'm using right now does not match the firmware that's loaded inside the Monaco. So I'm going to say yes, I want to update the firmware. It's updated the firmware and now it's going to pull live data. And you'll see that there are an awful lot of zeros here. As you can see one engine load is changing there. And we've got engine RPM gen set hours and coolant temp. So a couple of things to note. You're not going to see data for every one of these values. The values that you will see data from on are whatever is available on your engine. So if you see a zero here, chances are that value is not available on your engine or on your gen set. Now one other thing to note, interspersed in here, you'll see a couple of 32s. So this is a generator, it does not have a transmission. That's why we don't have transmission oil temp, but why the 32? All of the data comes across in metric. So if I go look at that value, actually, let me get the CDL number again. Let's find one here. Okay, so let's do this one. Intake manifold temp right here. So this is CDL nine. Let's go look at the scaling that we've got for CDL nine. So I highlight this. So all of the data that comes across the CAT data link is in metric. And that is the same for J1939 networks as well. So we have to take that value and convert it from Celsius over to Fahrenheit. And the way you do that is you take the Celsius value, multiply that times 1.8, and then you add 32. Okay, so let's go back to our watch window. Make sure we're viewing data. So this shows 32 because we are getting a zero value across the cat data link. We're multiplying it times 1.8, which is still zero, and then we're adding 32. So sometimes you might see some uh, pressures that are the same way in that they show a static value and they don't change. Again, that's due to the scaling, and um, you're not going to see data on every single value, but the the data that you do see will help you validate with the gen set. So now I can compare this number. 4,734 to the actual gen set panel to determine if that value is correct. 
So that's how you view live data inside Monaco View 2. Thank you for watching.